Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about The Blacklist, Season 10, Episode 4. Great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. The 200th episode, and this episode was a lot of fun. I mean, granted, there's dark and effed up parts to it, but overall, it was pretty uh, fun. I love, like, the uh, kind of treasure hunt element of it all, which also goes back to Reddington last episode. He super was gaslighting Robert, because Robert's like, no, no, so we're, we're going after a treasure? He's like, no, it's just a book title. No, but this this book title meant this. This literally has treasure in it. It's like, I I might have to get your head checked out, because it's like, ready, so ready, we, I got my answer, because I was like, was Reddington gaslighting Robert? Super was. So... Reddington gave Harold a, a, a blacklister this episode known as the hyena. Basically, his shtick is, hey, when white collar criminals go to jail who have like money stashed away, their base or their fortune stashed away so that when they do eventually get out of jail, they could go grab it up real quickly. He basically hunts after that. And in this particular case, a pretty wealthy guy died. Basically, he left a code that his three uh, daughters, his triplets, have to decipher and uh, once they decipher it, all his wealth would be theirs. That's the whole thing, right? So, when it's all said and done, um, Reddington's also after this treasure as well. So, he gave he gave the the, uh, the crew, he gave the task force this because, hey, like, a very bad guy is after them, but also after these siblings, but he's also after the treasure himself. Uh, what I also love is that Reddington, like, Harold woke up and was like, wait, did you break into my house? It's like, yeah. He's like, did you sleep here too? He's like, yeah, but, you know, maybe like a 30-minute na- uh, cat nap at best. And it's like, and then Harold notices, like, this jacket he had, and it's like, oh, he was just at a war, uh, some war reenactment. I'm like, oh, that's your shtick? And he's like, yeah, I started drinking with them, lo and behold. Eh, it's a long story, but yeah. I think that, in turn, is what ended up connecting him to uh, this particular uh, case and that he threw the uh task force way so i thought that was just pretty dope but uh but basically you have these three separate uh uh, triplets basically their father was kind of like not the best dad and he's like right you daughters have kind of he almost made it seem like they were failures in some regards and it's like they were like the fact of the matter is it they were always kind of like at odds it's like so He set up this whole thing of like, the only way they were going to be able to solve this is that they came together because it turns out each one of the clues is reliant on one of the siblings. So you have Kendall, who's the kind of older, more responsible sibling, who's like, nah, I'm going to be the one to figure it out. My sisters, they're irresponsible with money. The moment I figure it out and get the wealth, I'll share it with them. But I can't let them have a large chunk of money. They're not going to spend it well because they're too free-spirited. Because one is Cordelia. She's like the doctor. And then there's Alex, who sadly has kind of gone into the conspiracy route. And she's not all there. She's kind of turned into a legitimate conspiracy nut, so... Uh, sad thing is the hyena got to Kendall and ended up killing her, which is, I was like, oh man, that's, that's super depressing. So I was actually kind of thinking like, oh, when this is all said and done, only one sibling is going to walk away from this. Turns out that's not the case. I thought it was a beautiful twist when we find out, oh, Kendall, uh, not Ken, uh, Cordelia, she's the one that's, uh, the one behind all of this. Was it Cordelia or Cordelia? I think it might've been Cordelia. Um, I don't hear that name enough. Obviously when I think Cordelia, I immediately think of like, Charisma Carpenter. Oh my God. Cause I was trying to remember. I could, re- I was like, I knew her last name was Carpenter. I couldn't remember Charisma's first name. Uh, but that, that her, she played the character. Um, I'm, I'm sure there's like complicated feelings with all of that just because of the, you know, jobs we didn't know at all. But in Angel and Buffy that, well, Buffy and Angel, she played, uh, the Cordi- character Cordelia. So either way, tensions and all that aside, uh, that's what it, the name Cordelia immediately makes me think of. But, um, yeah, for her to be the one behind everything, it's like, that's an interesting twist, which is also messed up. I'm like, oh, wow, you had your sister killed? Not just your sister, one of your triplets killed. One of your, you know, that's, that's it. Killing a sibling is just getting, you know, it's already kind of twisted. But the fact didn't matter, it's, it's even more twisted when it's one of, it's a sibling that looks like you. But I guess it's like, right, siblings have falling outs all the time and stuff like that. So, but sadly, we find out Cordelia didn't actually want her sister dead the hyena just went too far because apparently I guess the reason why Kendall probably had the reaction she did when Dembe and um, wrestler showed up being like, no, I'm good. My security team has it. Maybe because she knew on some level that one, the main person behind this was uh, Cordelia. Like, cause it's like, he's like, Oh, I killed her because she figured you out. So I guess that's why she was probably thinking she could talk her sister out of all of this or something. I, I don't know. 
Or maybe she didn't know how extreme, how far her sister was willing to go. To be fair, it's not just on her. Like, the guy she deals with is a maniac. He kills and tortures people for information, so... But she wasn't too heartbroken about it later on, because once again, Kendall was the oldest who kind of ran everything, like, and made it seem like Cordelia and Alex were the incompetent ones. So she wasn't too heartbroken over that fact. But also, having the uh, hyena kidnap your sister and everything, too... And the moment she pulled the trigger, I was like, like, no loose ends or whatever. I was like, are you actually going to end up killing um, the hyena? Ultimately, she did. I was like, but are you going to kill your sister, too? But we only heard one gunshot. But I was war I, think, I was like, it seemed like you probably most likely killed the hyena. She, like, Alex was like, oh, she's going to tell me to wait here and she's going to come back and we're going to be a family again. And I'm wondering, is that true? Was she actually going to split any of that money with her sister? Because they were the two outsiders. Like, once again, Kendall's the leader of the pack and we're just kind of like the screw-ups or whatever. So I'm wondering, would Cordelia have actually given Alex any of the money or was she just saying that? Because it's like, right, I don't have to worry about it. My sister's crazy. She's kind of, kind of a little shut down, so I don't have to worry about it. So she would have just ran off with the money and it just, I mean... You don't have to, uh, less people you have to split it with, because she also knew what Reddington tells her later, of like, yeah, I know that if I got this money, the uh, the hyena would have just killed me, so like, yeah, I was future-proofing that situation by taking him off the board, but also, you know, even if it wasn't the fact of, oh, he would kill me, it's less people have to split the money with, so it all works out in the end, so... I guess that also makes the most sense, too, considering, like, with Cordelia, like, her being the one behind all this, because she was the one that made a point of, like, oh, I'm the one that has no interest in it. I mean, Alex didn't show, like, no interest in it, but she's so paranoid right now. She's, like, kind of, like, kind of out there that, uh, oh, anyone getting close to me is just after my dad's money. So she didn't even believe Wrestler and Dembe went to come visit her. It's like, oh, you FBI people are just after the money, too, so... But uh, getting into the other side of the episode, what I thought was such an interesting development was the um, the Robert and Reddington of it all. I thought that was actually, once again, kind of a sweet treasure hunt. Because interestingly enough, Reddington's like, right, you and me have a better like understanding of Warren, um, the triplet's father. It's like, yeah, they knew him to some extent, but we know a lot more about their father than they don't. So that allowed them to end up figuring out a lot of the clues. I love that Robert because he's like, why are you first you break me out of prison and now you're treating me so nicely. When is the other shoe going to drop? When are you going to bring down the axe? There's no axe. And he says, I do believe there was sincerity in this when Reddington said it, but he was like, yeah, I've lost a lot of people and my circle is going to get to the point that my, my, my inner circle is becoming less and less of a circle. It's like, well, Parks is, uh, Agent Park isn't around, so neither is uh, Aram. Obviously, lost a lot of people that he was connected to. Obviously, uh, him and Marvin. That's that's kaput. Obviously, obviously, but obviously, the biggest hole in him was like the whole situation with Liz. I think a lot of this stuff about conversations about. Um, especially in a situation with a parent passing on so much to their child. Let's not forget, Reddington was ready to do that for Liz. The blacklist was set up. This whole operation was set up for Liz to take over. This was hers to inherit. And now it's like, you know, outliving your child. Like, no parent should outlive their child. That's that's the, that's the, the hardship of it. Like, no parent would ever want to, nor should any parent ever kind of outlive their child. That's always the sad aspect of it, so... So I think these circumstances, obviously they're different circumstances, but you could tell it really affected Reddington, kind of like a, you know, because even Robert was like, yeah, it is kind of jacked up that when this is all said and done, that you basically sent your children on a, 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 a treasure hunt to find their inheritance. But Reddington was like, yeah, but for him, it's like whatever, it, whether it was like glee or just pettiness or whatever it was. Uh, Warren probably wanted to feel that rather than like the pain and regret that you would like you want to feel anything but that and even Reddington said when it's my time I hope that the only thing I feel is alive at the end I was like that's heartbreaking yet also very beautiful in its own right but like I said that's why I feel like there's a lot of like him and Liz connection that he sees into the Warren and um Warren and his children of all the of it all you know so I also love this, uh, just a little moment where it's like, Dimby and Wrestler, Dimby, it's like, oh, what took you so long? It's like, oh, yeah, the line was all. It's like, these are fries. I, I wanted onion rings. It's like, yeah, oh, they must have messed up your order. 
you've got onion rings. He's like, yeah, because they didn't mess up my order. I was like, I love it. Tim Bates not even going to offer him any. He could be like, well, you get a few of my onion rings. But it's like, no, they messed up your order. They didn't mess up mine. So why should I Why should I miss out on my onion rings for, for, for you? Because they screwed up your order. I don't know. I, I, just, I really like it. It's just like the smallest bit, but I love it. Um... But yeah, like breaking up, breaking down like the clues and stuff like that, because it's like the first clue had to deal with Heming Hemingway, but it's like, nah, I'm like, obviously he hated Hemingway, but it was like a, it was a cigar situation. So they're smoking the cigar. So the sun went down, turn on the lamp that kind of ended up giving them the answer to one code. Then they moved on to the next one, which led to them interacting with Alex and Tadashi came in, which also Tadashi shut up. I, I look, had that come up before. Maybe it did. I, maybe I just don't remember. But his stick is when he's done. He's like, ah, ta da. She, I was like, shut up, you. You and your puns. I love it. I mean, it's very egotistical for that to be your celebration. Ta da. She, shut up. Ta da. She, I love it. But yeah, him explaining everything of like how he ended up like getting close to Alex, like, uh, being able to fight, find her location. And so they ended up pretending to be this person that basically came up with a device that could basically block out any like listening device or whatever. Because once again, she's paranoid about so many people in the government and everyone looking at like listening in on stuff. So Reddington and Robert showed up and uh, played the part. Uh, turns out the second clue was the dog, Diamond. Because um, they thought it was about... Uh, the. Because he never, apparently never cared about gemstones except for the one that he got for his wife, which is also heartbreaking because his wife died during childbirth. Uh, but essentially, they carved, um, like put like a, uh, a bar, like a barcode, like so small that if any, if it ever got stolen, only they would be able to recognize and be like, yep, yep, that's the code. This is, this is her ring. Uh, but he had gave it to his daughter, but to kind of fund a lot of like her projects or whatever. We never really found out what exactly, but Alex ended up selling her mom's ring, sadly. So, but uh, yeah, when it's all said and done, um, they're heading, they ended up getting the code. They're heading towards the third code, which even Reddington pointed out. It's so interesting that Robert would felt so bad for Alex. He's like, you've basically conned so many people before. He's like, yeah, but those people have their full faculties. She's not all there in her mind mentally. So he felt bad about taking advantage of her. Other people, if you're in your right mind and I'm able to take advantage of you, I'm not going to feel bad. But her, he legitimately felt bad for taking advantage of her. So they go to the third code, which is about like, oh, basically it being... Uh, close to his heart or something. So they're like, wait, do you think he actually and Reddington? They're like, no, it'll be crazy. Come back to Earth, Warren. Of course, he didn't like put it on his heart. Uh, so uh, Cordelia ends up smashing the third like um, answer that could point you in the right direction because she had she already had two of the passwords. The only one she was missing was the one from um, Alex, and that was about the dog because she's like, right, she didn't. That's the only one she couldn't figure out. Um, but yeah, she smashed it up to try and keep Reddington from figuring out. I love the whole thing of, which one of you are Reddington? It's Reddington. And Reddy, Red and uh, Robert pointed to each other being like, he is. Because it's like, wait, why didn't you tell me some maniac is going to be coming after us? Like, Red's like, I, I didn't want you to be anxious. He's like, well, I'm anxious now. Uh, but nevertheless, Reddington ended up like, she was so caught up in what she believed to be the right code that it's like, oh, she interpreted it as her father's like, tombstone that it was made out of very specific material she thought that was the heart but if she's like nah, he's like oh that's a little simplistic the heart was your mom because your mom meant the world because he's like one day i was hanging out with your dad and your dad told me what was the motivation behind his success it was the the loss of her basically he buried himself in work and that was his only way to compensate because he never fully recovered. Nothing he did ever fully filled that void. And that's also why he wasn't much of a father because he, he always drowned his sorrows and he probably always worked just to compensate for drowning his sorrows. So when it's all said and done, it's like, yeah. And it, I, you could tell it made Ken, Cordelia even more like, oh, because she was so certain. Like, my dad wasn't emotional. He never got caught up in sentimentality and knowing like, wait, what? My mom was kind of Alaska. So, oh yeah, there's an epitaph here. And she's like, what does it say? 
without hesitation, Renta pulls out the gun and shoots her. She's like, you shot me in the foot. It's like, don't worry. He's like, I have a, I have a, because it's Robert's like, we can't just leave her here. It's like, don't worry. I got a cleanup crew. Come here to pick up the trash. It's like, yeah, regardless of it was your intention or not, your sister still died because of you. And once again, you weren't too heartbroken about it. So, and you, you kidnapped your other sister and probably would have killed her or just probably left her because if she was more in her right state of mind, you probably would have killed her just to once again assure that the money was only yours. Once again, maybe she would have come back, but I'm leaning more toward. I can I continue to lean more towards thinking, nah, she was just gonna leave her sister high and dry. But yeah, they ultimately ended up getting access. I love it. It's like, oh yeah, it's an NFT that was left here. A what? Is it? Is that? It's like it's a video. But this one's a video file. Is that? Is that? Is that a TikTok thing? He's like, no, no, no. I think that's a a, a chat snap thing. And it's like, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna play the video. And it's the most heart, it's so ironic and tragic is the fact is that the message was about like, hey, you guys uniting, this whole thing was about bringing you together. But even in the end, they, they can like, the reason why Cordelia, not justified, but Kendall, Cordelia is the one that wanted to work together. She legitimately did. But uh, Kendall's the one that was like, nah, I'm, I'm going to handle it because I'm the more responsible sibling. I'm the one that worked at dad's business for all those years. Like, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the rightful one that should handle all this. I should be the one that divvies everything up. And does it make it okay what Cordelia did? No, not at all. But I'm saying that was a catalyst for it, um, especially two years of them looking for it and just no... You know, it, it didn't work out. Just the heartbreaking thing of like, yeah, one of your sisters is dead. One's going to go away for a long time because the last, like, Cordelia and, like, Alex are looking at each other at the task force headquarters, like, looking at each other. It's just like Alex realizing, like, what had happened. It's like, yeah. Because, I mean, she's the one that figures, like, wow, you, you had her sister killed. It's like, yeah. And for nothing, you walked away with nothing. Alex did because Robert could have gotten half the money, but he actually decided to go for a third because he wanted to send some of it to Alex and yeah, she gets a pretty good couple. Um, because the whole thing is worth millions entirely. Like the whole kit and caboodle is like millions. All we saw, we saw like in the hundreds of thousands, not unless that was like the hundreds of millions that she was getting. I don't know. I think it was still going up when we saw it, so we don't know how much she actually got. But um, we got some little explanation for Reddington because I was like, what are you doing? At first, I was like, well, we know Wujin, it like everything. Not last episode, but episode two. Everything in episode two was Wujin setting up, trying to get money to fund his war with Reddington. I was like, is Reddington trying to build up his money situation to like counter that? I was like, is that what this whole treasure hunt was about? But he even says in himself with Harold, it's like, leave Robert alone. I'm going to need him for what's coming up because maybe he might be some an ace in the hole. Like, I might have to keep him in the back burner. Because uh, he also made that clear with the... Um, the uh, God, what were they called again? The 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 four something. It's literally the last. It's the name of the last episode. I'm blanking on their names right now. But the, the, like the pit pocket squad from last episode, he's like, yeah, I might need to keep them in the back burner because he needs allies when it comes because he knows how dangerous Wu Jin is because Marvin revealed so much to him and all all Wu Jin has to do to unite everyone is tell them who Reddington really is and that's enough to fund every enemy Reddington's ever made every ally that Reddington has ever made turn against them and it's like yeah you're going to be fighting a shit ton of dangerous and powerful people especially when you consider the people that are on the blacklist who are still alive but when it's all said and done uh he Reddington said I might need Robert because Robert might be I need him his help to do something that the task force might not be able to do something for me. And I'm wondering, does it have to do with the Wujin situation at the end? Because Wujin reaches out to Robert and Wujin's like liaison dude. It's like, oh yeah, uh, Reddington's the reason why you got arrested because he's working with the cops. And it's like, why? So if you want to find out all about that, reach out to Wujin. He's excited to hear from you. So now it is a thing of knowing like, oh, Reddington like screwed you over. To be fair, you were in jail for a year, ended up breaking you out, but now giving you money. But I'm sure Robert's also going to read that as what it can potentially be read as, which it strongly could be read as, is, oh, Reddington's trying to pay, like, Reddington's trying to buy my loyalty. Because it's like, right, you want to put me in a good position because you staying in jail, if Wu Jin got to you first, he would have easily been able to convince you. You're hoping that this will stop Wu Jin from, like, getting to um, Robert, 
But this could also be a ploy. Robert might be going deep cover in Wu. Like he might be playing the role, uh, quite the role in this war, and kind of do, you know, it's a comic book reference. But you know, obviously, there's also because there's also been talks about James Spader returning as Ultron. That's a whole conversation. So it's very befitting with the Marvel um, conversation I'm about to have. But it's like very similar to, and I'm not the comic book person, but I do know that Spider Man played the role of a double agent when it came to Civil War, specifically in the comics. That, that version, because obviously the one in the MCU, the movies, is quite different. So, I, I wonder, is uh, Robert playing that role of like, oh, I'm against you, Reddington? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, because this whole thing is a, like, this is what it's really all been about. But yeah, that, it does make you go like, that's what, I mean, Reddington's trying to assure a lot of loyalty and people on his side, because he knows how big and costly and, like, how bad things are going to get with this whole war with Wujin, so. Especially because he had just made that remark to uh, Cooper about, like, yeah, like, we're not, me and uh, Robert, we're over the whole uh, screwing each other, each, each other over thing. It's like, yeah, we're past that. We're kind of putting the past in the past, and we're kind of, you know, everything's good, everything's culture, but, you know, uh, kosher, I said culture. Everything's kosher. Because I, I was also thinking like Gucci at the same time, just because I'm like, yeah. Uh, tangents and all that. So, like, it, uh, all the words for good slash cool. Um, but yeah, interesting, interesting developments. I'm really curious to see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. I should also just take the time. I brought it up at the beginning, but yeah, congratulations on the blacklist reaching 200. That's a milestone. Not every show is able to. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that we were able to hit such a big milestone in the final season. I think Smallville's in the same way. Cause I think Smallville's final like season, like total is like, it's like 200 and something. So I think they hit 200 in their final, the 10th and final season, even though there's technically an 11th season in the form of a comic and potentially an animated sequel. Haven't heard any updates about that, but either way, um, at least I don't think there's any updates about that. It, it, once again, tangents and all that aside, but it's like, yeah, it's kind of a pretty dope, uh, thing to be able to hit that. I'm like trying to, rem well, it probably was a while back before when you know, I, was, I was about to reference another show, but it, it, it's not important. Regardless, I, congratulations to everyone involved. You know, those who were involved with the blacklist over the years who may no longer be, cause I think this wasn't, was it last season or this season? It might've been last season that like, uh, was it John Bokenkamp, like the main creator behind this? He was also like an executive producer. I don't think he's the what was. I don't think he's involved with the show anymore. I think he's still an executive producer. But I think it was either last season or this season. Might have been last season was like the first season he wasn't like mainly mainly involved. I I don't. I, I glimpsed at something that said that. Like I said, I don't think it was this season. I think it was last season. But either way, tangents and all that. So that's what I'm saying. Right. Anyway, everyone involved with the show in the past, everyone involved with the show now, like, congratulations on being able to, you know, um, it's uh, it's quite the achievement, so, yeah. Um, it's very, very uh, befitting, considering, you know, once again, this being uh, final season and all, it's very poetic and fitting in that regard, and having this type of episode be that feels like, yeah, it's just kind of a fun adventure episode, like I said, except for some of that death and sadness and tragedy mixed in, but also it feels like this could be a a turning point in some regards of like the what the story beats we got this episode, but yeah. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.